Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with a very special announcement. Vectorwiz 2023 was released last week. I meant to get a video out before, but things came up and unfortunately I couldn't do that. But here we are. This is the first of my 2023 videos and we're going to take a look at the new release trailer, which is pretty awesome. So let's take a look and review this trailer and I'll come back with some more detail on some of the amazing new features you're going to find in 2023. So thanks for watching everybody, let's get started. Well, as you can see, the new release trailer this year is focused on saving you time and improving your workflow. Now, these are things that every architect or designer needs to really focus on. It's something that I'm always teaching with my clients, how to improve your efficiency in your workflow. And it's great to see Vectorworks focusing on this as well with the new tools. So just to break it down to begin with, the very first thing we saw was this new amazing 3D capability with this offset edge tool. This means that you can basically just offset any edge, a single edge or multiple edges and push and pull and so on as well. So much more kind of um, rapid modeling and much easier to create very complex 3D models with no stress at all. Okay, so let's take a look at this new amazing uh, 3D modeling capability. So here we are just doing a bit of kind of normal push-pull using the automatic face which we had before. But now you'll notice that if we go into the 3D tools, there's a brand new tool. Let's just drag this one off here. And this is called the Edge Offset tool. So first of all, we have a few different modes. So with the Edge Offset mode, you basically have the ability to offset a single mode. Uh, when you highlight the face or the edge rather it will basically give you these arrows that allow you then to basically just offset these edges as you can see so it's very very rapid and very very straightforward to do this kind of modeling now the other really nice thing is the offset face mode with the um basically parallel edges so if you select an edge and then once you click this one you'll see it selects all of the edges that are parallel so it's a bit like the offset tool itself and then we can kind of basically let's hold the b key down and just offset down in there as well so it makes it very very easy to make some very very complex shapes now don't forget also with vectorworks we can click uh, our shortcut so let's get our circle tool and we can basically simply draw automatically on any face and do the push pull uh, mode as well. The good thing is though, if you do something that you didn't want to do, do remember one of the ones things I love about Vectorworks is this history. So we simply double click to edit the solid and we can go back in and then simply remove this step or modify it as well. So that's one of the really nice things with the Vectorworks history. Uh, you have this great ability to basically step backwards. Let's just have another look at this edge offset tool. So we'll offset this one and off we go. Okay, so this works really well uh, for what I call planar edges. Um, but what happens if we're kind of dealing with non-planar? So let's just push and pull a circle here. So previously, what you wouldn't have been able to do was basically offset uh, individual edges here and work in the way that I am. So now the ability to kind of offset these non-planar, uh, if you like, these sort of circular or curved surfaces really, really does make a big difference. Um, I'm not sure what I've modelled, but I hope you like the way I've modelled it. And these new features will make Vectorworks 3D even more powerful. And it's something that I'm always saying to my clients, if you haven't yet tried them, definitely give them a go. Trailer was the new Revit import options being heralded um, to improve collaboration. Now I've got a pretty big uh, Revit file, it's 144 megabytes that I'm starting to import and you can see it took a little while to get to this stage. But basically you've got a really nice kind of ability to tap in now to both the 3D model, 
bring in maybe TD views if they're in there as well. And you just get a lot more information on the import as you're bringing it in. There's also various different options here, including uh, importing textures now, which are supported. And finally, you can even rev it, uh, sorry, reference the model as well, which is incredible. Now, I haven't tried this in uh, detail yet, but I'm just really showing you some of these new options. I really like the way you can actually prefix the names of the classes that are coming in from Revit 2. But here are the elements. So let's just go ahead and click OK. And you can see if it's a fairly small file, it'll import pretty rapidly. Uh, so there we go. That's going to be done. Any second, let's just do Command 6. And there is the information that was imported as a Revit file format. So very, very rapid and really nice to have that sort of control. You'll notice also all the classes were prefixed with RVT, as I asked them to be. Some great improvements for Revit and collaboration with other users using other software. Okay, so the next thing that we saw in the release trailer was the amazing new feature for Graphic Legends. Uh, so just before I demonstrate this, you can see I've just kind of come up with a very simple um, sort of little ground floor of a building. I just want to demonstrate one other feature for you as well that you may have missed from the trailer. So now when we go to, for example, windows and doors, we have a new mode, uh, which is this third one along called interactive sizing insertion mode. And this is incredible. It basically just means that we can draw directly on the face of the model and start inserting both windows and doors. Let's just have a quick look at how doors work as well. So let's go to my door tool. You'll notice that with the doors, um, let's go to this mode as well. Of course, they anchor themselves on the bottom, but we can still, depending on the settings, change the head heights as well. So absolutely incredible. Now it's a lot of doors and windows in this project. But it's really just to demonstrate how easy this is. What's really nice is with this, if you do want to resize them, um, you can basically just drag them interactively and just sort of modify the size. So let's just stretch that out. You can see I can take this window here, just select it, grab the handles and just modify both its position and its size as well, interactively, rather than having to go to object info and typing it in, which of course you can still do. Okay, great. So this is definitely a feature I'll be focusing a lot more on in future videos. So if you are new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you'll see those. So let's go ahead and create a new graphic legend for this project. First of all, you can only really create the graphic legends in a sheet layer. So here's a couple that I've already created and you can see a really nice one for doors and for windows here. But basically, let me just show you how incredibly easy this is. So basically, I'm just going to create a new layer. Let's just call this 03 and click OK. So here we are on our sheet. So all we need to do is basically go to our Dims and Notes palette. Let's drag that off. Go to our new feature here, which is the Graphic Legends panel. And simply, I would recommend you go up to the top and choose maybe from one of the pre-selected sort of Graphic Legend types. Now you can see I've already got a couple of uh, ones that I've edited, but if you do want to, you can go back to the beginning ones here and select. And you can see there's a big bunch of different types of legends available. So let's go for this window one here, click to activate and basically drag and that's it. And just watch what happens. It basically calculates all of the windows. Of course, it's, there's more there now than there was before. And that's because I've added some. Um, and really nice this, you can sort of interactively kind of size and scale as required. Now, if I do want to, I can also reduce the scale just to kind of get it to fit a bit on that page. Let's do that one to 100 scale. And look at that. You know, now we've got interactive windows with uh, elevations, plans. We've got the dimensions on. We've got the window numbers as well. So the real beauty of this, of course, is that as soon as I make some changes to my model, all of this will be updated. Now, if you do want to, there's a lot of settings that you can actually fiddle around with by double clicking and editing things like the cell layouts as well. So I'll go into this in further videos, but it's really just to show you how cool this new Graphic Legends feature is and how interactively it works both for doors and windows and all sorts of other things like symbols and hatches as well. So one of my favorite features and a massive time saver. If you watch the video really carefully, you will have also seen that one of the other really big improvements is what we call wall closure. Now, this is where basically you add windows or doors into the walls and you can both form the opening reveals in different ways. 
but also close the cavities and so on as well. So I've just been playing around with a few examples and you can see these are some of the examples that I've been able to come up with really, really rapidly for wall closure. And in a minute, I'll show you these in 3D. But basically, it really kind of extends dramatically the use of the wall tool. And let's have a quick look at it in 3D. Absolutely amazing. You get this lovely wall closure working both in 2D and 3D on the inside as well. So there's an infinite number of possibilities. Um, really, depending on what the kind of architectural style you're looking for, you will certainly be able to create the kind of detail and construction that you need. Now, just to show you briefly how this works, let's just drag off, for example, this one here. And I'll delete the windows in there just for a second. So what you're going to notice is if you basically go to the window tool and drop in a window, let's use this new amazing interactive uh, model here. You'll notice at the moment um, the window isn't actually doing anything. OK, so all you need to do to enable that is right click, go down to plugin options and then use the wall closure. Now you get the option to exclude the left, the right, the top or the bottom. Otherwise, if I click OK, basically whatever the closure settings of the wall is what the window itself will use. So now I've done that on that particular window, you're going to notice it on both of them. That's really, really cool. Now let me just show you also this amazing new interactive resizing. Look how cool this is. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, the way this works is phenomenal. It's really zippy and, you know, means that you can really design, I guess, a lot more fluidly. Uh, without sort of having to tap in numbers, you can kind of just design in sort of elevation or plan or whatever it is you wanted to do. I really, really love that feature. Let's just move that window along a bit there and let's just duplicate it as well. So basically you can move, you can copy, you can edit in 3D and all of this is working both in plan as well. Now, in order to get into the settings, the various settings, let's take a different wall here. All you're going to need to do is go to wall closure at inserts and then you begin to open up the dialog here. And again, this is one that I'll go into in far more detail in other videos, but really just to show you some of the different kind of settings. Now, this one is done by style. Okay, so what that means is everything is greyed out. So of course, if it is done by style, do remember that you have to go to edit the wall style itself. And then you'll notice that everything is available for you to change. So not only do we have the build up of these amazing walls and do make sure you check out my JRA wall libraries, we've basically got the various closure options here in the settings. So if I wanted to make a change here, let's say that I would like that to be um, splayed, for example, let's say 45 degrees and let's just say 150 for the diagonal there. So you notice now I've splayed this external wall here. Can you see? And if I do want to, I can actually do the same on the interiors. I mean, just for fun, let's round. Let's go a 150 rounding. See how that looks. So now we're rounding it on the inside. So this is all to do with the profile shapes. Uh, there's a huge variety of profile insets and offsets. So you can create those construction details as you would like. And finally, we've got um, the ability to wrap different elements here. So we'll be able to go into this in a lot more detail, but you can see I'm able to wrap the brick and stone around. Let's click OK. So of course that wall type will get replaced wherever it's been used. And here we go. Look at those new lovely inserts with that gorgeous detailing, both on the inside and the outside. So I think this is going to really open up, um, you know, some very, very creative architectural styles. And what's really nice about this is basically you can just replace the walls if I go to my walls library um, and bring this in, so let's just go to right click and open my JRA wall library. Now, if you haven't seen this, do check out my store on the website. Um, it's a great resource for all sorts of libraries. And you can see I've got a really great collection of ready-made walls here. So for example, all I need to do if I want to choose a different one is command C, for example, copy. Let's just pop back in here and paste that into place. Click OK. And the wall comes in, there we go. And if I did want to replace it, I could basically use that to replace that particular wall type. Now, of course, now I've replaced it, all of that closure is gone. So do remember, all I need to do is edit the style of that wall, click onto wall closure, and then just basically start to build up that wall closure that I wanted in the first place again. So it's a very, very cool feature. And I think it's something, let's go to wrapping, 
And what I'm going to do here, let's just take that stone panel and indicate that I will wrap that back to, let's click tick for wrap. You'll notice immediately the preview is updated now, which is excellent. And let's wrap that back to maybe the mineral wool. That's good. Let's click OK. Click OK and replace that wall type. And now you can see those lovely um, sort of ability to basically splay those reveals as well. So what do you think, everybody? I think this is absolutely fantastic. I'm very excited to be using this in my next few projects. Okay, so just before we finish the video, I couldn't help resist but focus on one of the main new features you're going to notice straight away. And it's the fantastic new home screen that Vectorworks 2023 introduces. We've got some really cool features here where you can basically access the learning environments, the cloud services, and all of the files that you've been working on recently. So it's a really, really great aspect to introduce yourself to the new Vectorworks 2023. So what do you think, everybody? I really hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. As I say, I've got so many more videos planned. It's a very exciting time. Please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next ones. Bye-bye.